In 1956, fuel shortages saw the emergence of German bubble cars in the world market and so Leonard Lord, the head of British Motor Company, set out to rid the world of what he considered to be horrid bubble cars by commissioning the design and development of a proper miniature car. Before we continue with this video, please support our channel by hitting the subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free and comment below and tell us which cars you'd like to see next on Evolution and we'll make it happen. Are you always finding it hard to find the perfect shaving companions? The Dollar Shave Club has a solution a four four blade diamond grip handle combo for only 370 you could get this luxurious shaving set that can ensure that you're always ready for anything looking sharp and ready to take over the world this combo comes with four four blade razor cartridges a pre-scrub shaving cream and post shave dew ensuring you feel fresh every single time Use the link in our description below to get yourself this luxury set. Lord set out some basic design requirements that the car had to comply with. And these were that the car should be contained in a 3 by 1 2 by 1 2 meter and that the passenger accommodation should occupy 1.8 in length and the engine should be an existing engine to minimize development costs. Alec, Isaginus and a small team at BMC were tasked with the mission of developing their intended bubble car killer. The team was composed of John Shepard, Jack Daniels, Chris Kingham and two engineering students and four draftsmen. And by 1957, a working prototype was completed and nicknamed Orange Box. Leonard Lord approved the car for production on the 19th of July. One of the greatest innovations that the mini team came up with was mounting an A-series four-cylinder water-cooled engine transversely and using an engine oil to lubricate four-speed transmission in the sump and employing front-wheel drive. In real-world terms, this was like when Nikola Tesla discovered electricity and there were more innovations from where they came from. The drive was taken down to the transmission via a traditional clutch coupled with a set of primary gears on the end of the crankshaft which birthed the unmistakable transmission noise which the Mini became famous for. This has become the go-to recipe for any small car design. The initial prototypes had an existing 948cc A-series engine which produced 27 kilowatts and propelled the car to a top speed of 144 km per hour. Although the production car saw a decrease in the engine capacity to 848cc and a shorter stroke which resulted in a decrease in power, the car managed 24 kilowatts of power and there was a significant decrease in torque. The decrease in power and widened body resulted in more stability, more traction and a more manageable performance. The top speed was also decreased to 120 km per hour which was blistering fast for an economy car of the time. Another unconventional innovation was the suspension designed by Isaginus' friend Dr. Alex Malton and it used compact rubber cones which produced the natural dampening and absorption of bumps and provided excellent stability coupled with space saving positioning of the wheels at the far end of each corner and resulted in the Mini's go-kart like handling. The suspension was further developed into a hydroelastic system which was first used in the Morris 1100 which launched in 1962 and the Mini gained the system in 1964. The production version of the Mini was showcased to the press in April of 1959 and by August, when Magic Johnson was born, several thousand cars were produced. The Mark I Mini was marketed as Austin's and Morris's until 1969 when it became a marquee on its own. The Mark I was produced from 1959 to 1967. 
featured variations of the four-cylinder A-series engine. The smallest was the A48cc and the largest was the 1273cc. The Mark II Mini was launched in 1967 at the British Motor Show and featured a redesigned grille, a larger rear window and other cosmetic changes. It also featured the same variations of the A-series engines. The Mark III was produced from 1969 to 1976 and was assigned a new code, AD020. Due to many body shell modifications, it had larger doors, concealed hinges and sliding windows replaced with winding windows. The hydroelastic system was chucked out and replaced with the original rubber cones as a cost saving measure. The premium 1.2 GT and Clubman retained the more expensive hydroelastic system till 1971 and these cars started taking on the mini identity as the Austin and Morris names were dropped and from there on the iconic mini name started taking shape. The mini started to get outdated though. Since its inception in the 1950s till now little modifications were made to its appearance and nothing more. Then the Mark IV came along which was launched in 1976. It had a front mounted rubber subframe with single tower bolt. A rear frame had larger bushings and all these improvements were intended to improve the Mini's refinements and reduce noise. Twin column stalks for indicators were introduced and wipers, I'd say that's about damn time. The size of the foot pedals were also increased and the rear light cluster also included reversing lights. The base model Mini was replaced by two models. The new base model was the Mini City. It had black painted bumpers, an untrimmed lower fascia rail and partly fabric seats. It also had a wing mirror and one sun visor only on the driver's side. On the plus side, it had unique city graphics and a boot badge unique to the city. Above the city was the 850 SDL aka Super Deluxe which had the same specifications as the Mini 1000 but with a smaller engine. In 1980, Mini started seeing some mechanical improvements. The engine was upgraded to an improved A plus 998cc engine and this would be the only engine available in the Mini. And around this time, Mini competitors such as the Ford Fiesta, Renault 5s and Volkswagen Polos started emerging into the market. And it would be about this time when the Mini's imminent demise was evident. Also, the birth of British Leyland's Metro pushed the production numbers of the Mini to an all-time low. Although it's worth pointing out that the A-plus engine 12-inch wheels with front disc brakes improved soundproofing and a strong transmission, these upgrades brought the Mini to the modern age, so to speak. In 1984, the Mark V came out and the car was equipped with 8.4 inch disc brakes and plastic wheel arches but retained the same classic body shell and shape. For the Mini's 25th anniversary, British Leyland produced a Mini 25, a limited edition model in a bid to celebrate the occasion and publicize the recent upgrades to the Mini and this resulted in increased sales for the Mini. In 1990, the Mark VI was launched and the engine was moved forward to make space for the 1275cc power plant and later it was equipped with the larger horizontal integral float version of the SU carb plus the single point fuel injected car which came out a year later. The 998cc power units were discontinued Production ended in 1996 and was replaced by the Mark 7 Mini. This Mini was the final band member to ever join the Mini Band and it featured a twin point injection with front mounted radiator. A full dash replaces the original shelf, internal bonnet release and a driver's side airbag was introduced. The basic model was a 1.3 and this was the Mini's final act and after more than 30 years of production, the original Mini outlived the bubble car era and the Metro, a car that was meant to replace it. 
BMW then acquired Rover in 1994 and began development for an all new Mini hatchback under the Mini marquee and it debuted at the International Motor Show at Frankfurt in 1997. The concept car was an ultra-futuristic retro-styled Super Mini hatch intended to replace the original Mini and resemblance between both cars one was unmistakable. BMW then acquired Rover in 1994 and began development for an all-new Super Mini hatchback under the Mini marquee and in 1997 at the Frankfurt International Motor Show, the Mini concept was unveiled. The concept car was an ultra-futuristic retro-styled Super Mini hatch intended to replace the all-original Mini. And the resemblance between both cars was unmistakable. And in 1997, the Mini concept was able to capture the essence of the magic the original Mini had while bringing the retro design into the 21st century. And in 2001, the design team had a full-scale clay mock-up ready for presentation and it went so well that the board members instructed them to not change a thing on the production model. And so the first generation R50, 52 and 53 models were born. There were various models of the Mini. The base model was the Mini 1 and it was powered by a 1.4 litre inline 4 cylinder engine. All other models used a 1.6 version of the engine. From 2000 and so, we saw the introduction of a Cabriolet Mini, the R52. Mini also introduced a Mini Cooper S in the range with a hood scoop and double exhaust, which exit under the center of the rear bumper, giving the Cooper S super hot hatch looks that were so out of this world. They inspired a whole range of cars to follow suit. In 2004, the same year BMW offered the Mini convertible, the Mini got a facelift and the Rover R65 gearbox was upgraded. The Cooper in the Mini Cooper range was reserved for sportier versions of the Mini, namely the Cooper and Cooper S, which companies John Cooper and Cooper Company had direct involvement in. And the range topping Cooper was the John Cooper Works version, which was the ultimate hot hatch. The first generation John Cooper Works Mini produced a whopping 160 kilowatts of power and 250 newton meters of torque, thanks to high volume injectors, nozzles, free flowing exhaust, a recalibrated engine management unit, and supercharger. The second generation Mini came out in 2006, the R56 and 57. The second generation Mini had re-engineered platform incorporating many stylistic and engineering changes and this was a departure from BMC's old ways with the classic Mini which received minimal changes throughout its lifetime which lasted decades. The second generation Mini used the Prince engine manufactured at the BMW Hams Hall engine plant. Initially the Cooper and Cooper S trims were launched and was completed in 2007 when the Mark II Mini 1 joined the range and in the same year the diesel Mini also started making its appearance for all you diesel lovers out there. It was supported by the lower model Mini 1D in 2010 and in 2011 we saw the all new 2 litre diesel batched the Cooper SD. The second gen convertible was unveiled at the Detroit Auto Show and Geneva in 2009. The second gen Mini was powered by an 88 kilowatt 1.6 Prince engine which had BMW's multi-valve technology and 0 to 100 took 9.1 seconds and the top speed was 201 km per hour. The Cooper S was capable of 129 kilowatts of power and the supercharger was replaced with the twin scroll turbocharger and it could hit 100 from 0 in just 7.1 seconds. All the Mark IIs came with optional stability control. The third generation Mini was unveiled by BMW in November 2013 and sales started in 2014. The new car is 98mm longer and 44mm wider and 7mm taller than the outgoing model. And the wheelbase is 28mm longer which resulted in a larger interior and a larger boot volume an increase of 211 litres. 
six all new engines were developed and used for the third gen mini. A 1.2 cylinder petrol with 55 kilowatts or 75 kilowatts and a 1.5 liter three cylinder petrol with 100 kilowatts, the BMW B38 engine. A 2 litre 4 cylinder petrol with 141 kilowatts of power for the Cooper S. There were also diesel options for all new diesel lovers out there. These composed of the B37 3 cylinder 1.5 pushing 70 kilowatts and 85 kilowatts powering the Cooper D. And a 2 litre turbo diesel inline 4, the B47, producing 120 kilowatts in the Cooper SD. And in 2020, the John Cooper Works was released, which appeared as a concept car in 2017. It also managed a blistering time of 7 minutes and 56 seconds around the Nürburgring. The Classic Mini is more than just a classic, it's a time capsule. It is almost as old as my grandmother is. A peek into the years just after the World War. When the world was finding its feet and superpowers such as Britain and the USA were solidifying their power and dominance. And Mini was a car that was bought by men and women whose egos didn't need to be stroked. Just as the Mini was good enough, they knew themselves they were good enough. The BMW managed to capture that magic with the modern Mini hatch. The modern mini hatch isn't an exotic car, I know we use this comparison a lot on this channel but believe me it turns heads, I can say this because I own one. The retro design and the amount of time, patience and attention to detail placed in the development of this car makes everything in the car feel special. From the volume knob to the air vents, every piece of this car is a piece of art. The power delivery, like the old school classic mini, is not only exhilarating but is refined. Which can be said that the old mini perfected after some time. The evolution of the mini is something any scientist would look at and approve of. All the useful traits of the mini were passed from generation to generation and through every generation these traits were refined and enhanced. And on that note, please don't forget to subscribe, comment and tell us which car you'd like to see next on Evolution. See you next time, Buffett. Sharp, sharp.